This is the Dollamore Daily, and I'm Jesse Dollamore. It is amazing that it, it has been nearly a year since Donald Trump has been out of office, and there are still new revelations being made public on a weekly basis. This reporting from the New York Times is remarkable because it sho- it shows Donald Trump intended, wanted, pushed for, along with Stephen Miller, his white supremacist gargoyle in chief, pushed for an invasion of Mexico. And that is what it is. When you send 250,000 troops, a quarter of a million troops, I believe they say in the article, it's a sixth, yeah, right here, a sixth of all American forces, and you want to send them to the southern border. And along with that, you want to send raids into the sovereign nation of Mexico to take on drug cartels. Not our purview. You know, when you talk about the jurisdiction of police departments, same thing with countries. You don't just get to invade a country with your military because you don't like what's going on inside, especially one of our oldest allies and our greatest trading partner. I'm going to read a little bit from this New York Times article. Buckle up. Trump's Pentagon chief quashed idea to send 250,000 troops to the border. Top national security aides to former President Trump also talked him out of launching military raids against drug cartels inside Mexico. President Trump's defense secretary thought the idea was outrageous. Uh, look, th- it is interesting to me, and I'm having to check myself all the time. I'm uh, when, when new information comes out or a new understanding of information, I really do try to, to tweak my worldview. And there's been many of these cases. Uh, I've held in contempt many of the people, most, the vast majority, we'll say, of people who served in Donald Trump's administration. And I still do, largely, but there have been m- members that I felt uh, did a stand-up job, James Mattis for one, bucking against the trend of Donald Trump, pushing back against the authoritarian uh, tendencies, desires of Donald Trump. And uh, even Mark Milley, when they marched across the street and Donald Trump held up the Bible, it's not my Bible, it's a Bible, after they gassed peaceful protesters. I, I, I on my podcast, I don't know if I said it here on YouTube, I thought G- General Milley should have uh, resigned. Mixing politics and the military a little too closely, marching over there in uniform with Donald Trump. Wasn't a fan of that. In retrospect, I think uh, it was good that he stayed because he was able to to hold off the horde, so to speak. The same could be said maybe of Mark Esper. A weaker person in that position may have allowed Donald Trump to go forward with this plan from he and the gargoyle, the aforementioned gargoyle, Stephen Miller. In the spring of 2020, Mark Esper, the defense secretary, was alarmed to learn of an idea under discussion at a top military command and the Department of Homeland Security to send as many as 250,000 troops, more than half the active U.S. Army, and a sixth of all American forces to the southern border in what would have been the largest use of the military inside the United States since the Civil War. With the coronavirus pandemic raging, Stephen Miller the architect of Mr. Trump's immigration agenda, had urged the Homeland Security Department to develop a plan for the number of troops that would be needed to seal the entire 2,000-mile border with Mexico. It is not clear whether it was officials in Homeland Security or the Pentagon who concluded that a quarter of a million troops would be required. The concept was relayed to officials at the Defense Department's Northern Command, which is responsible for all military operations in the United States and on its borders, according to several former senior administration officials. Officials said the idea was never presented formally to Mr. Trump for approval, but it was discussed in meetings at the White House as they debated other options for closing the border to illegal immigration. Mr. Esper declined to comment. But people familiar with his conversations, who would speak about them only on the condition of anonymity, said that he was enraged by Mr. Miller's plan. 
In addition, Homeland Security officials had bypassed his office by taking the idea directly to military officials at Northern Command. Mr. Esper also believed that deploying so many troops to the border would undermine American military readiness around the world, officials said. Now, that's obvious. There's a finite number of military service people. And if you take a sixth of them and put them on the southern border, where there is no threat, despite the propaganda and the fear mongering, there is no threat. Let me say this before I continue. The United States economy would collapse if not for immigrant labor, whether that be legal immigration or undocumented immigration. The people who cook your food in restaurants and pick the food that is served to you in restaurants is largely an undocumented labor force. Who's going to make, who's going, they whine about the supply chain now. What do you think would happen if we extricated however many million undocumented workers in this country? Is, is Stephen Miller going to go do those jobs? Does he have a plan to replace those jobs when they're gone? Those workers? No. Mr. Trump's obsession with the southern border was already well known by that time. He had demanded a wall with flesh-piercing spikes, repeatedly mused about a moat filled with alligators, and asked about shooting migrants in the leg as they crossed the border. His aides considered a heat ray that would make migrants' skin feel hot. The same man who thought he could nuke a hurricane wanted to, to inflict physical harm upon desperate people seeking work. And Stephen Miller, the white supremacist gargoyle, right by his side. Around the same time that officials considered the huge deployment to the American side of the border with Mexico, Mr. Trump also pressed his top aides to send forces into Mexico itself to hunt drug cartels, much like American commandos have tracked and killed terrorists in Afghanistan or Pakistan, the officials said. Mr. Trump hesitated only after aides suggested to him that most of the world, Military raids inside Mexico could look like the United States was committing an act of war against one of its closest allies, which is also its biggest trading partner, the officials said. And that's what deterred Trump ultimately. Listen, a lot of people say, quit talking about Trump. Quit talking about Trump. He's irrelevant. He's not irrelevant. These are the ideas and the proposals and the strategies and the policy objectives that will be back on the table if Donald Trump runs and wins in 2024. These are the policy objectives that are on the table right now because of Trumpism. Trumpism isn't going away. Trump isn't going away. And to stop talking about him is to do him the favor of not taking him seriously. If you're in it to save the Republic, if you're in it to save our country and our democracy, you don't stop talking about the threat. What do you think, though? I'd love to know. You can call, leave me a brief voicemail, 714-576-4054. Of course, you can email me daily at dollamore.com. Thank you for joining me today and every day that you do. I appreciate you. You can follow me on social media. I'm at dollamore all over the place, Twitter, Instagram, everywhere that there's social media. And if I bring you some value, just a little, if I bring you a $1.99 worth of value every month, <laughs> you can support my work by clicking the join button below this video or going over to patreon.com slash I doubt it podcast. I love you guys. I'll see you next time. Until I do, be genuine. Take care of one another.